Hi there, I'm Davey Bones, also known as Celeritus. I'm the creator of Adonis, and I'm going to show you how to get it up and running. So the first step is to get the actual model. The easiest way to do this is to just go to Roblox's website, and you're going to type in Davey Bones, and you're going to go and make sure you're searching in people. Click on me. I don't know who that is. Uh, so this is, this is me. And then you're going to scroll down. You're going to go to Inventory. You're going to go over here to Models, and you're going to find Adonis Loader by Davy Bones. This is also me, so that it's also fine if you want to use this one. Just know that this one is outdated. This is my old account. So this is the new one. This is the current updated one. So you're going to go here, and there's going to be a big, uh, I don't remember if it's like, if it says Get Item, it might just say Get. You're going to click Get. It's going to add it to your inventory. Um, optionally, the, there's another way that you can also get the model that's, I want to say safe, it just, you know, helps you avoid any of the malicious or, you know, clone versions of it. Uh, you can go to our GitHub, and if you go to the GitHub here, you're going to go over to releases, and whatever the most current releases will be up here. This one is going to be the model file for Adonis. The extras one is just all the stuff that Adonis uses that it doesn't include in the main module. This can include things that it loads remotely, stuff that's been removed, whatever else it may be. Uh, you don't need the extras model, I just include it for the sake of transparency and to offer a way to have everything be the exact way it was when that release was made. Um, there's nothing really important in it, but so the one you're going to want here is just a snapshot one. You can download this and you can just insert it into Studio as a file, uh, alternatively, or not alternatively, but also there's uh, some instructions here on how to deal with the GitHub version if you decide to go that route. So I opened the, uh, I made an empty base plate game here just for, you know, the sake of showing you how to set this all up. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open the Explorer if it's not already open. So that's this here. And you're also going to want to open the toolbox. So the toolbox by default is going to have you on the marketplace page. You don't want to be on the marketplace page because there are a lot a fake Adonis is on the marketplace page like this here. That's not me. I don't know who that is. This one is like this one's me. This one's not me. Notice how similar they are, you know. So just uh, be careful about that. So you're going to want to go over to inventory. You're going to go into make sure you're in your models. So it'll say my models and you're going to scroll down until you find the one by Davy Bones Adonis loader here. You're going to just insert it. They're going to get this blinding white light, most likely. Uh, that's just for the sake of the the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail camera. The, this is how the whole thumbnail thing works. So if you look here, there's just a little Adonis thing. So you're going to take it, and you're going to drag it down into server script service. So why that's not, or, so why that's important is not something I'm really going to go too far into, but just know that basically anything in server script service can only be seen by stuff that's running on the server. So players, when they join, which also includes exploiters, won't be able to see whatever's in server script service. They won't have any idea what's in there. This is important for the next step, which is actually configuring Adonis, because if you go into Adonis loader and you go into config and then you go into settings here, there's the settings module script. So this contains all of your settings and stuff. The reason why it's important to keep it in server script service as opposed to workspace is, let's say an exploiter joins your game, right? And they're exploring the games, uh, the contents of the game and all that. If they see, can see the loader model, they can just go into config and they can look at the settings and they can see all of your settings, which you'll understand in a minute probably why that's important. Um, whereas if you put it in server script service, they can't see it. And anything that's a script will still run in server script service as opposed to server storage or replicated storage. So it's generally just a good idea to keep anything that's running on the server in server script service if possible. So the next step here is, as I said, configuring it. So you're going to want to go in here, config, settings, open that up. This is going to show you this here. You're going to scroll down. All of this here is just kind of a little bit of an extra text-based tutorial if you prefer to just read. Kind of tells you a little bit about how some of the settings work as well as the, uh, ooh, I don't like that, as well as some of the, um, some tips on how to understand Lua and stuff like that, which is what it done is in all scripts on Roblox pretty much are written in. The very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to go to here, this big thing that says change this, that, you know, the, uh, having trouble here for some reason, having a stroke. 
the data store key, you're going to want to change that to just something random. It doesn't really matter what you change it to. Uh, you don't have to remember what you change it to. You don't have to really do anything with it after that. Basically, this will be used to save... When, when Adonis goes to save data to the data store, it'll encrypt it all using whatever key you set here, and it just makes it a little bit harder for, uh, let's say, some malicious backdoor server script to deal to start messing with Adonis's saved stuff. Uh, because then people could just add themselves to the admins and all that. So it's important to, it, it's kind of important, it's not super important. Uh, it's more important only really if you use a lot of free models. Because sometimes they can be infected with stuff and that stuff will target stuff like Adonis or Cole's admin or whatever else. So I'm not going to go through all of the settings here because... I don't want to spend all the time going through that. There's a lot of them. They all have a short description of kind of what they are and what they do next to them. I'll probably make a video going through each and every one later, maybe. Not right now. Don't quote me on that, though. So let's start with, I guess the best place to start would be format. So you'll notice next to some of these table settings. So this here is a table, the little squiggly brackets. It's just a type of data that can hold multiple stuff. Um, You'll notice next to most tables, there is a format. So down here, format, here, format. This is showing you the type of things that you can add to it. So you could just add the username, it needs to be surrounded by, by quotes. It can be single quotes or double quotes, doesn't matter. It needs to be in quotes of some sort. You could also do username followed by user ID. Uh, you could do just the user ID. If you do just the user ID, you don't include any quotes. So that way it's interpreted as a a number and so Adonis can say can see it and say hey that's a number not a string let me treat that like a user ID you can also add groups so if you add a group it's important to know that this part here the little group followed by the colon this needs to be here uh, don't change this to the name of your group don't change this to your group's ID or anything like that it needs to be group because if it's not group Adonis won't know that it's a group it'll think that it's like a username or whatever else uh, group ID it's going to be the ID of whatever group you want to give admin to. And then a uh, group rank is going to be obviously the rank in the group. Uh, as to where you get the rank, if you go into your group's configuration page stuff and you go over to roles, you'll see that every role has a number assigned to it. It'll be between 0 and 255. Uh, so that's what that corresponds to. And I'll show you how to do group stuff in a, in a minute. Um, Optionally, you can also do just group ID. So that's anyone who is in the group. So every single rank. Uh, you can also do item and followed by item ID. This needs to be, hold on. This needs to stay as, you know, literally the word item followed by a, a colon, same as group. Um, also game passes as well, same deal. And then this will be the game pass ID. It's important to note that if you put a Game Pass ID uh, as an item, so let's say you have a Game Pass, but instead of adding it as, you know, Game Pass followed by Game Pass ID, you add it as item followed by Game Pass ID. Uh, it's important to note that that probably won't work since there's two different API things that handle uh, Game Passes versus items. So if you give it a Game Pass ID, it's not going to know... Like if you if you give it a game pass ID and you tell it that it's an item, it's going to try and check it as an item, not a game pass, and then it's going to say that they don't own the item, most likely. Uh, it used to be the case where this would work fine, but then Roblox decided to change it or whatever, so now there's a whole different service that handles just game passes, which is why items and game passes are considered two separate different things. So now, actually adding people to... Oh, hold on. I need that. Oh my god. Put this down. So now actually adding people to these tables is not very difficult. So let's say I wanted to make Celeritus a moderator. Uh, typically, what I would recommend doing is just using the user ID. So mine, in this case, is 1237666. So just like that, the person with this user ID, which in this case is me, Celeritus, will have a uh, moderator level admin. The one thing with this is it might make it a little confusing matching up whose user ID belongs to who, to who if you have lots of admins. So another way that you can do it as well is just username, colon, user ID. So now, oh, hold on. So now if the user's name is Celeritus or they have this ID, um, 
it will give them moderator level admin. I would always recommend including the ID because usernames can change. I think it's like what, like a thousand Robux or whatever, and you can change your username. Um, so obviously, if you only use the username and then someone changes their username, they're not going to be an admin anymore. And then you have to go in and you have to reconfigure it and stuff. And it's just dumb. So it's usually a good idea to just always include the user ID or only do the user ID. Now, let's say you wanted to give a rank in a group, uh, you know, moderator level admin. So let's do group. Um, I'm just going to make up a group ID. I don't know if this is a real group. And let's say we wanted to give anyone who's in rank or role 100 moderator admin. So we just do that. Now, anyone who's in specifically role 100 is going to be a moderator if they're in this group as well. So they're in this group and their role slash rank 100 in this group, they will be a mod. Uh, alternatively, <coughs> you could do this role and higher by doing, um, putting a little dash in front of it. And then there you go. Now it's going to be role 100 or higher. This isn't going to like restrict um, higher level, you know, ranks from getting higher level versions of admin. So let's say you wanted to make 120, you know, roll 120 uh, administrator. Let me just grab this. Okay, so let's say, let's say you want everyone who's in rank 100 up to 120 to be moderators. So that's basically what this does. So uh, anyone who's in rank 100 or higher will be a moderator unless they're rank 120 or higher. So starting at rank 120, they'll be admins and then you can do, uh, you know, the same thing, but with like, uh, let's just say 200. So now, oh, so now everyone who's rank 200 and higher could be a head admin, et cetera, et cetera. You can use this uh, same exact format for bans as well. So if you want to ban an entire group, you can go for it. So let's do group. Boom, just banned a whole group, just like that. One other thing as well, uh, if you're the owner of the place, you're automatically considered a creator. So creators are people that have absolute power within the system. Um, they can bypass all permission levels, no matter what it is. They can use every single command, even if it's hidden or um, has its permission level set to something ridiculous, like 99999 or whatever it may be. Uh, you, a creator can still use it. So it's very important to not make people a creator unless they have edit access to the game through studio or you trust them a lot. Because these are people that can change settings and stuff. They can uh, make people administrators, remove them. They can mess with the system and the script and save stuff and all that. So give it out sparingly. You being the owner of the place will automatically be a creator. So really this is for if you want to add other people to it, or if you're doing some sort of team create uh, project or something like that. Do the test. Now we're just going to wait for it to load, make sure it actually worked. And there you go. You can see in the server window here, Don is loading, and then it says that it was required by whatever loader required it and where it was at. And then now I'm going to load in and there we go. So in this case, it's not going to give me admin because this is a test server and I'm just a normal player in here, but you can see it's working, you know, through here and you can see the user panel and all that's working. Make it rounded. I like rounded. But, uh, let's... Oh, also, if you want to disable this little help button here, the setting to do that is... I feel like that's the only other important thing because I know a lot of people are going to ask. Um, this here, uh, I would recommend if you don't want that little button being in the corner, just set it to false. It doesn't really matter that much. I don't think it's kind of, I feel like pretty unintrusive. It doesn't really look like anything related to the system. It's more just there to kind of give you quick access to Adonis's user panel. So this covers stuff like information. So you can open commands and stuff from here, uh, view the credits, change log, all that stuff. So current version is 120. And then, uh, you know, donation stuff, all that, keybinds, aliases, 
Uh, these are client settings. So these are unique to every player. Um, these just control some, some client specific stuff, nothing that can affect the server or other players. So stuff like the, the theme Adonis will use. So I personally prefer rounded. Um, the theme you saw originally was the default theme. Uh, whether or not to show capes, whether or not to show particle effects, etc., etc. But that's about it. Um, so yeah, just do real quick. Publish Roblox. Yeah. So now if we publish to Roblox and we go here, this should be our game, and Adonis should load, and I should be a creator. And there we go. So that little welcome message down there, uh, assuming you can see it, basically means that we are an admin. So if we click it, it'll show us commands. Uh, since I'm a creator, I have access to every command. So I believe there's, yeah, five pages of commands. So you can do search up here. And it'll show you whatever commands are matched to it. But that's about it. I mean, if you, uh, that's pretty much all it takes to get it set up and running. You don't even really have to add yourself to the admin list or anything. You're automatically a creator.